people of Earth. We have come to upgrade your cosmic consciousness. DNA activation ready. In three, two, one. Hi, welcome to Q&A on Breakthrough Leadership. I'm Lou Quinto. And I'm Craig Anderson. Craig, it's that time of the quarter again. Actually, it's been more than a quarter that <laughs> we've done our last mailbag. So, oh, I thought you this was where you gave me a bunch of money. But yes, yeah, it's mailbag yeah. day. Yes, yes. No, distributions come out next week. <laughs> Lots so, of pennies flying around. Right. So this is our mailbag episode. Uh, this is only our second one this year uh of our mailbag episode so uh went through the mailbag and uh i picked out uh, four um I'll, I'll i'll call them um uh concerns that some of our viewers and listeners have that they would like some more information about so why don't we go ahead and dip into that mailbag and let's take the very first one cynthia from brooklyn she writes hey guys like most companies we're going through a lot of changes as a result of covid do you have any advice on how I can manage change on a daily basis based on changes being dictated from the top? Craig, what answer do you have for Cynthia or advice, I should say? That's a great question, Cynthia. And I, I know from clients I'm working with and organizations I'm associated with, Things are changing rapidly, and and I bet your team is tired because this pace of change and having to change things all the time can be exhausting. So, you know, I think the first part is just acknowledge that. Acknowledge we're going through a lot of change right now. You know, Lou and I have talked a lot on the podcast about leadership empathy. You know, just we don't want to, you know, suck it up. <laughs> suck it up. Turn I think it's suck change. it up buttercup, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. But, you know, I, I think the first part is to acknowledge their concerns about the pace of change, about what's going on. And sometimes pace of change is towards improvements, and sometimes it's just reacting to situations. But, you know, we're, we're in a cycle of business where change is happening very rapidly one way or another. So I think first, you know, have some empathy about it. Explain you understand the change, the pace of change, and, and try and get from them maybe what's going on. We talked recently about active listening find out from them how it's impacting them. That's probably a great place to start because if you understand how they're experiencing it, you're probably in a better position to have a further conversation about it. What do you think, Lou? Yeah, no, I, I in fact, I just had an article uh, that I published in a, in, a, in a trade magazine for a client that I did a keynote back in June uh, in Napa Valley. And I did it on change. And the one thing that I pointed out is that, change happens because of people change doesn't happen because a memo or an email got sent down from you know the, the person at the top of the organization and said do this because we have as craig you are absolutely right we have experienced a rate of change in our businesses that is you can't compare it to any other time uh, mm -hmm. in our country's history we have gone through so much change in, in fact i think we've made reference to the former ceo of uh, google uh, made a comment in August of 2020, where we've experienced in just four months during COVID of being remote working, uh, we've experienced almost 10 years worth of change. And that continues as COVID continues to hang around. And so what I always tell a leader when managing change is, first of all, change must be managed. It's not just do this, you have to manage it. And there are some key components. One, not everybody accepts change at the same rate. So you have to understand that you may get people who are very resistant to change initially. You may get other people who immediately grasp that change because they see the benefits and they wanna move forward very quickly. And if any time in our lifetime, and an organization can make a change, now it's the time to do it. The second thing is you need to communicate what are the benefits of those changes and tie those benefits to things that are tangible. 
productivity, customer service, expenses, income. These are things that people can actually see how change is affecting things. And then the last thing is communication. When it comes to change, communicate what is changing, but more importantly, or as important, I shouldn't say more importantly, but as important, what is not changing? Because the minute someone hears that something's changing, many people will assume, well, if X is changing, then Y is going to change too. And so now in their mind, they're not only hearing what is changing, but they are imagining other things that are changing, which could increase their fear or their stress levels, which is not going to help you, Cynthia, manage that change on a day-to-day -day basis. So those are three things that I would recommend in managing change on a daily basis that you do regularly to be able to get your folks to begin embracing the new changes that are happening. And Cynthia, because we practice what we preach, we're gonna say it again, when you're communicating, you've got to communicate it a lot. The time you're sick of saying it is when everybody's starting to hear it. So thanks for that great question, Cynthia. So let's go on to the second question from our electronic mailbag from Jackson from Minneapolis, Minnesota. 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 I'm sure. That, yeah. Well, there you go. Might even be cold up there already, Lou. I don't know. <laughs> and yeah. All right. Craig and Lou, thanks for all the advice from your podcast. You're welcome. They got me through most of 2020 and this year. The advice has been practical as well as entertaining. I am hearing a lot of rumblings from people in my department about seeking other employment. How can I best retain the talent that I have? Luke, what should Jackson be doing? Well, first of all, Jackson, you're not alone. Uh, this is something that every company is facing right now. Uh, because of remote work, people are looking to what they consider greener pastures, maybe more flexibility, or if your company is saying, well, we're not going to do as much remote as we did before. And now that we've had uh, almost, uh, what, uh, 30 months of remote work, people are used to remote work, they want to do that. And companies are hiring people, you don't need to necessarily be in the same city, because you can work remotely, you're getting a lot of people that are testing the waters. And so your question on how best you can retain the talent that you have so that they're staying put is number one, talk to all of your people. Ask that, talk to them and listen to them. What are your concerns that you have? What can we do to improve? What can I do to help you with your, with your job? What support can I give you? What development maybe can the company provide you that we're not providing you? You need to show them that your company wants to keep them and will do, I won't say whatever is necessary, but to be able to address some of the concerns that may be causing them to look for what they consider greener pastures. So in order to retain your best talent, I would say start sitting down and talking with your folks. Ask them, are you happy? How are things going? Don't make this a re an annual review or a, a, I'll call it a, yeah, a, an extemporaneous review. Just sit down with your people and talk to them individually to one, because you said you heard a lot of rumblings. So there may be a lot of rumor out there. You need to deal with facts. And so find out who may be on the fence, who actually is looking to leave, or maybe just actively pursuing other potential alternatives or opportunities. Uh, and also who's staying? Who? No, I love this company. I want to stay here. You need to know where everyone's at, where everyone is. So you know, it's almost like being in Congress. Count your votes. Know if you were going to have a vote today. Who's staying? Who wants to leave? Who's on the fence? Who do we need to push over? And if you can start really getting into their heads to find out why they may be looking, it may help you to retain a significant number of your, your, of your employees. Well, Jackson, I don't mean to be Debbie Downer here, but it may already be too late. Oh. Why are people moving on? People are moving on because they don't like the environment they're working in. They don't like the culture. They don't like the pay. They don't like the workload. They don't like the lack of flexibility. We're in a world where they can find all those things. 
So if you're not giving them flexibility, you're not in a high engagement workforce, you're paying people lower than the market, you may have already lost them. If it's just making, a, making its way to you, it may already be too late. So everything Lou said is right, but I hope you've been doing that all along. Because if you haven't been doing it all along, you're probably at risk of losing those people right now. And you know who's going to stay? Is the complacent people and the people who don't think they can find a better opportunity and they're sticking around because they don't think it exists. So if you put together a really good workplace, and I'm a little concerned that you're hearing rumblings now, Jackson, because that means you haven't been paying attention because by the time it's getting to you, it's getting pretty loud. So I think do everything that Lou said, but if you haven't been doing that for a while, it may be a rough couple of months for you. And as you start to make these changes that Lou talks about, make sure you consistently do those. You know, the, the workforce ebbs and flows, but I would really, you know, start working on those things right now. And, and I hope it's not too late. Damn, you are depressing, Craig. Wah, wah. <laughs> uh, Jackson, I am sorry for my co-host's depressing answer. Uh, although he, he is right. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> right. It's tough love day, Lou. It's tough love on Q&A on Breakthrough Leadership. All right, Jackson, I hope you will continue to listen to us, even though Craig gave you a little depressing news. But it is good advice. And uh, uh, it, it, and I think, Craig, it, even though it, 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 the way you put it, it is depressing, uh, it, you're going to have to hire new talent. And you want to hire new talent and bring them into an environment that people want to work in. So yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. So good. Well, Jackson, hope that helped you out and hope, hope you continue to listen. <laughs> I love right. any sentence that ends with you're absolutely right, Craig. Going on next. <laughs> next All, right. All right. The next one, Lou and Craig, I've been in charge to put together a team to begin business planning for 2022. Yes. We're only two weeks away from the beginning of the fourth quarter. Uh, I've never, at least the time of this taping, I've never been asked to do this. I normally just ex execute someone else's plan. Where do I start in carrying out this assignment? Barbara from Kansas city, Missouri, Craig, you are currently, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in Clear Path Consulting. This is your topic of the week right now. Yeah, it's you know, you know, it's it's an important thing. And you know, Barbara, this is a great opportunity for you to start putting some some real marks down on your company of what you see as the future for the company. So, first, you know, I'm not sure from your email if you're the CEO of the company. Doesn't sound like you're probably down a couple of rungs in the organization. So. Where I would start is understand where the organization's going. What are the big goals out for the next few years for the company? How does that impact your area of business? So I, that's where I'd start is how does your team contribute towards that big goal? And then once you understand that, let's start really clearly saying, all right, if the company's here in a few years, where does my team, my division need to be in that three years if that's the timeline for the business? Get a really good vision of what you look like in that model. Then let's drop it down a level and say, you know, how am I going to execute on, you know, what's the ways we're going to do things here to support the company's larger goal? How are we going to check in? How are we going to measure? How are we going to finance? How are we going to hire, fire? How are we going to distribute work? What are the ways that you want to do business? Because your team wants to know kind of what the rules of the road are as they're working forward. And now that we've got that, let's figure out, all right, how are we measuring success? What are the key objectives for us on depending on what your group's doing. Is it revenues? Is it expense management? Is it profitability? Is it process improvement? And is it turnaround times? Whatever those key things are that are your measurable areas of success, let's get those defined. And then the last piece, what you're going to look at is you're going to say, all right, well, this is how I want things to go. This is what I got to do. You're going to start to find out you've got some pieces missing to actually execute on those strategies and achieving those objectives. And those because you become your primary project, your priority projects. So start outlining what those are, line them up. Don't try and do them all in one quarter. You'll kill yourself. Lay them out in order, both priority order and, and time order, and put all that together. The simpler you can keep that document, the better. I work with my clients to get all that on one page. And that's going to really help get your team wrapped around what it is they're going to do. You want to build a document that's easy to communicate that you can put up on a wall. So everybody, but look at that stabbing motion, like put it on a wall and <laughs> like Martin Luther. Uh, I, was gonna, I was thinking more like Freddy Krueger, but if you want to do Martin Luther. Know, I think I'd rather be Martin Luther. Than Freddy 
Uh, at any rate, put them up where everybody can see them because when people see that, they understand, okay, now this is where we're trying to go. And that allows them to make decisions based on what you've outlined. So you're not constantly having to sit on top of people and telling them what to do next. So that's the quick and dirty version of where I'd get started if I were you. What else do you think, Cliff? Okay, I, 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 I'll, I'll make it shorter. Remember this, Barbara, people tend to support what they help create. Everyone who's going to be involved in this plan, make sure that they have some involvement in creating this plan because they're going to then feel responsible for helping to carry it out as successfully as possible. People don't like to be giving, given rules and here's what we're going to do. Here's our goals. And, you know, your productivity needs to increase by 10. People don't want to hear that. They, people do not want to hear that. What they want to do is they want to be part of creating that future that you are now responsible for helping put together. So that's what I would remember. And I would start then getting the people involved because this way everyone has responsibilities that you're making assignments. So when uh, Craig in his <laughs> Martin Luther example that he's giving you where you're putting it up on the door and saying, this is the way we're doing things now, They've already seen it. They know what's in it and their names are next to things. So as part of this plan for next year, make sure you are including everybody that's going to be part of that plan. So in addition to everything Craig said, people tend to support what they help create. Fair point. All right. Thank okay. you, Barbara. Good question. Last question from Elliot from Portland, Oregon. Okay. I'm hooked. I have to say, I've shared your podcast with many of the folks on my team. Thank you. It seems like you always discuss a topic that's central to conversations we're having at work. Are you stalking us? <laughs> you might be. What, what, what was that communication tool, that, that uh, the black hole where yeah. we... You put it in the in the break room and people can just tune into the break room from remote work. Remember <laughs> that creepy thing? Yeah, yeah. 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 We are not stalking you, Elliot. It's it's actually one of the things I say is, you know, a lot of times problems seem new to you, but a lot of and they probably are new to you, but somebody's already struggling with that issue. Right. Uh, so one topic I haven't heard you talk about is process improvement. Can you share some ideas on how to best attack our processes to make them more, more efficient? Hey, we may do another Freddy Krueger knife thrust. Here. <laughs> All right, Lou is the process improvement guy. Lou, why don't you give Elliot some words of wisdom here? Okay, first, first of all, I would recommend Elliot, if you haven't read any of Deming's work, I would definitely go and Google Deming and look at his process improvement model, which is think, do, check, and act. That is a good process that you can use when it comes to process improvement. The second thing that I'm going to say is with all of your processes, don't try to change the entire process all at once. What you want to do is you want to take your process and you want to break it down into small bite-sized pieces and you want to improve pieces of an entire process by priority. If you work on one first, what's going to have the biggest impact? And I, when I say impact, if you're going to change a process for increasing uh, productivity, increasing profitability, increasing production, increasing customer customer service, whatever that major measurement is that you want to achieve, take that issue and break it down into small parts. So I, when I teach process improvement, I always tell people is take your process and visually create it on a whiteboard or a flip chart with sticky notes, whatever it is, where you have step A, step B, step C, step D, and you go all the way through so that you can look and say, here's what it takes to conduct this process. And if we want to improve it, for instance, let's say we want to reduce the amount of time it takes for something, next to each of those tasks in your process, write down the estimate of how long it takes that individual task within the process to complete. And if you want to make a significant impact on improving process on reducing the amount of time, what I always say is just like looking at a budget, where is the biggest number? And that's going to be the top priority because that's the one area where you probably can have the biggest 
impact. So if something takes eight hours to do, then the group takes that one step and goes through a creative problem solving process and says, okay, what can we do to reduce this by 25%? And so now you want to go from eight hours to six hours and you'll come up with ideas on ways to improve, not the entire process, but that one step. And then once you've accomplished that, implement it, check, do, do, and then act because you want to act on it and then go and take the next one is, which is the highest number that you have there and brainstorm. What can we do to improve this step of the process? And when you get all done with this, I'll call it a good critical thinking process improvement, you will improve the entire process a hundred percent. So don't try to jump on the elephant and bang on it to try to tackle it. You got to grab a leg, one leg at a time to try to tackle the elephant and bring it down. That is the best way to begin attacking process improvement. Craig? Wow, an elephant. Been on any elephants lately? <laughs> I'm not. I don't like my odds. Everything Lou said, what, and I think this is implicit in what Lou was talking about, but I'll just state it, is when you start this process improvement path, get the right people in the room. Get the right people at the table. Don't assume that you and a bunch of the other leaders know enough to figure out this whole thing. You may see the areas that are costing you a lot or that are taking a lot of time, but if you really want to get to the root of it, you're going to have to go down into the organization and get the right people at the table who are living that every day, who probably, my guess is, have some really good ideas about how to make that process better, but they don't speak up and they're not bringing those to the table. So start that culture shift that you get those people who are doing the processes at the right seat at the table to talk through how to improve those processes. Because I guarantee you, they want to be more productive. They don't want to do stupid stuff that takes a lot of time. Right. And they are living it every day. Yeah, so, and, and they know the redundancies right. that you can eliminate very quickly and different things like that. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that's how you're really going to get the meaningful change in your time is to get the right people, put the task force together to work on it and let them loose to start making the changes that are necessary. Maybe you need to guide them through a lot of what Lou talked about on how to get there. So facilitate it, but let them come up with the solutions. That's what I would add on to that last one. Yep. What do you think, Lou? Yep, plan, do, check, and act. Four easy steps that have been being used by companies around the world for probably 50 years. Yeah, if I'm sure if you're calling out a book, Lou, it was probably written in the 30s or 40s, so. <laughs> No, everybody knows plan, do, check, and act. So anyway, right. Elliot, we hope that we've helped you, giving you some advice on how you can best attack uh, your processes to improve them, to make them more efficient. All right. Well, that was a good mailbag, Lou. We appreciate everybody who takes the time to send us emails with their questions about what's going on, because that helps us with one, a great mailbag episode, but also even before this, Lou and I realized we haven't really done a great process improvement discussion yet. So no. for that coming in the future and like, share, and subscribe this podcast. If you have thoughts, if you have questions, if you can see ways we can do better, dress better, look better, speak better, leave some notes for us in the comments. You can find us on our Facebook page, on our LinkedIn page, on our YouTube channel, uh, and on our website, qaleadership.com. And you can find us on all your favorite podcasting platforms. So just go in there, search for Q&A on Breakthrough Leadership. Until next time, I'm Craig Anderson. Then keep your hands washed. Keep your distance. I'm Lou Quinto. <laughs>